Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's just get started here. Okay, so my name is Marconi and I work for Originate. Um, and before I start, uh, uh, last August I had the opportunity to meet Dick Wall in San Francisco <coughs> at Scala by the Bay. And I was telling him that many years ago, when I was learning English, I downloaded every single episode of the Java Posse. And I was listening to, to the Java Posse four or five hours a day. It was a very important tool for me to learn English. So if you have any problem understanding my accent, blame it on Dick. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> it's totally his fault. <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm going to talk about F-bound and polymorphism, and thank for the guy who didn't spoil my talk. Uh, recursive type signatures in Scala. And I would like to, to use the opportunity to thank my good friend uh, Andrew at Originate, who wrote most of the content that I'm going to present here today. Okay, so raise your hand who has ever seen a type signature like this one. Tray, T-U, extends T-U. Okay, yeah. the ones who did not raise the hand, you should have because even Java has them. So you have something like uh, enumerations in Java that they are parameterized and they extend enumeration on the, on the same parameter. Uh, so this is called F-bounded polymorphism and you may also see the names like self-referential types, recursive type signatures, Recursively bounded quantification, and so I got this from the Wikipedia page. I'm not going to read that. The important thing here to know is that it's an interaction of parametric polymorphism. Parametric polymorphism is a fancy name for generics with subtyping. So if you have generics in an object-oriented language, all object-oriented languages have subtyping, or most of them have. So this is something that you can use with object-oriented language and uh, generics. And F-bounded quantification is when the constraint, the subtype constraint itself is parameterized by one of the things you know, that are on the left-hand side. What that means is if I have a type A and a parameter B, that B is going to be a subtype of A itself. Okay. Uh, what Wikipedia is not going to tell you is why it's called F-bounded polymorphism. But don't worry, because I will also not tell you. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I just have no idea why they call this F-bounded uh, polymorphism. I don't know. It could be called E-bounded, G-bounded, X-bounded. I have no idea. If anyone knows the answer, please raise, uh, raise the hand. I would love to know why it's called F-bounded. Okay, so how I see it? Uh, for me, this is a very powerful object-oriented technique uh, that leverages the type system so we can encode constraints on generics. So our generics do not grow too wild. Uh, so we have some advanced type semantics that are enforced by the compiler over classes and traits. And just enhance type safety and at the same time, and this is what I love the most about them, is that the number of unit tests that you have to write to test your code, they can be greatly reduced because there will be a lot of things you're not going to need to test because the compiler will ensure to you that they will just work and your tests get simpler. So this is the main reason, my main motivation for using uh, F-bounded polymorphism. Okay, but what the heck does it do after all? Um, but why can I just use tray T U? You know? Even better, just tray T and go home, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's learn by example here. I think it may be a good idea. Uh, let's suppose that I have a database and you know I have entities and some CRUD methods. Uh, we could define them so, something like this. So I have a class. Apple and I have a class orange and they have methods for create, read, update, delete that are take some reasonable parameters and return some reasonable things. Um, do not 
pay too much attention to the methods themselves if these were, were real. Things like read would not be on the instance, would be on a companion object, but this is not important here, just an example. And the problem is that the class, they, they look nearly identical, you know. They have the same methods with very symmetric signatures. And if we are, were to create a new entity, we would have to expose the same methods again. So let's abstract all of that into a trait. But let's start simple with our little friend trait T. Okay, so I have a trait entity. Uh, and then I have create that returns an entity, read, which may or may not return an entity, and so on and so forth. And then I have a class apple and a class orange, and they both send <coughs> entity. Uh, there's nothing really uh, great about this code. Uh, I'm not worried about the methods here, you know, I'm just going to define empty traits because what I want to show you is if they type check, I, I'm really not worried about the methods for now. I don't expect to surprise anyone with that piece of code over there, okay. Well, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the method signatures that we have on trait T, they do not express what we want. Okay, I cannot ensure, for instance, that if I call update on an apple, I'm going to get an apple back. There's no guarantee in the type system for that. And as it is, I can return any entity I want when I call apple.update. So let's try again. And now we're going to add a type parameter. Okay, trait T U. Whoa, getting there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I have again a trait entity E, and now I have a apple extends entity apple and orange extends entity orange. So let's run this code here. Um, and again, I, I really do not expect anyone to be surprised. It's better than what we had before, but it's still not good. Uh, the types do not yet express exactly what we want. Do you see the problem? Well, no. <laughs> uh, the problem is that entity can be extended in unintended ways. Okay, there is nothing forbidding of having class orange extends entity flying saucer. Um, and just to show to you, I have a class flying saucer. <laughs> yeah, it's durable. <laughs> and um, I, I, now orange extends flying saucer. It doesn't make any sense. So how uh, the problem now is that entity does not restrict the type of E. I can have any E. And anything could be used. There's no compiler errors. You know, I just compiled the code and you saw the output. The compiler was very happy. This is no bueno. By the way, I speak Portuguese, not Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we, we want a big, fat compiler error if we try something other than orange extends entity orange. Uh, so how to ensure that E matches its class? Type bounds, of course, of course, whoa, how could I forget? Uh, and finally, we arrive at trait TU extends TU, which is the whole point of this talk. So let's try again. Be careful now. Whoa, 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 sorry. Uh, so I have a trait uh, entity E extends entity E, and everything as usual. Let's see how this guy works. It works, compiles. Nothing, nothing wrong. Okay, it's better. Uh, we have constraint that E has to be a subtype of entity. Uh, no more orange extending flying sauce, and I can show you that if I try to extend flying sauce, I finally get a type error here. Uh, but there's still one last problem. There's always problems. 
Oh, thank you, sir. Can you guess what it is? And our good friend there just gave us the answer. I may have a class Apple that extends Apple, and Orange can extend Apple. So just to show you that the compiler will happily accept it, I just did it. <laughs> I created a class Orange <laughs> extending Apple, OK? Thank you, sir. Uh, so it's not ensured that E maps its own type. E can be any entity, OK? And the trait is still open for abuse. We are getting there, getting there. <laughs> okay, we need a way to ensure that orange extends entity orange and nothing else. <coughs> self types. Of course, self types. Oh, come on, come on. Who could not think about it? So this is what we need, okay? We, we need a trait entity E extends entity E with a self type E. Huh. Uh, okay, so the self type E ensures that N class that extends entity is of type E. Uh, I believe I sh should show you here, okay. Uh, so I have my class here, as I said, and I have app extends apple just as I wanted. It works. But now, if I try something like class orange extends entity apple, what I'm going to get, let's go back here. So this is my little guy, and I get a compiler error. Finally, I cannot have an orange that extends an entity apple. Okay, so we can rest confident that our definition of entity ensures that n subtype of entity E is in fact an E. So if you have a code base, you do not need to write unit tests for every single entity in your code base to make sure that create is going to return the same kind of entity, that update is going to work. You define those methods in a trait and just by the type signature of the trait, the compiler will ensure that everything is fits right in place. Okay, so we have the semantics we desire, and the compiler will reject invalid code. Okay, and that was it for me. Uh, here's some reference. Uh, I'm, there's this GitHub. I'm going to put this presentation there. It's not there yet because usually I make some changes even to the last minute. Uh, all the content is posted as a blog post in blog.originate.com. You can go there and you can read the article. It's a lot better than what I could do here. Okay. Thank you all very much. And do you have questions other than how did I do it? Everything in the wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's a good question. So let me recover the slide here. No, I don't have a slide. Well, okay, so. No, I, I already answered my own question. Uh, you can't do that because Mac OS and Apple have to extend Apple, which hasn't been defined yet. Yeah, so I, I, I would say that the self type annotation would forbid that. I, I would have to test. I'm really not, not sure. But it, it's a good question. I'll test it. Uh, if you just had a T, you <coughs> could put like a plus or minus in front of it. Oh, that, that's variance. I, I, I don't think. Right. It, it seems like this is the next level down. You're trying to put bounds on not T, but the thing inside T. Mm, yeah. The syntax, though. Yeah. yeah, it's a little ugly, but it does work. And after you, you learn it, it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, um, I first saw this kind of syntax on Java 5 for the enumeration. And if you have that, you know, the, that Java book, the Java programming language, they're going to say something like, the type theorists tell us that this is the type it should be. Yeah, I, I think this is, you know, in, in the book, this is the explanation they give. And I said, okay, awesome. Uh, oh, I have 35 seconds, 30 seconds. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it, it will be online on my GitHub. Uh, it's, it's just a, a little trick here. Uh, something to fill the screen on the repo. Yeah, you just press N and P to, to go back and forth between the slides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I'm abusing the, the raffle. Okay, guys, th thank you so much. <laughs>